So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking the time and joining us here in Rüsselsheim, on the web and on the phone. This conference will be held in English language, but we do, of course, offer also translation into German and French. Today is a historic day as we announce our future plan pays to the public. Opel Vauxhall CEO Michael Rocheller will present the plan in detail to you in a minute. Afterwards, Carlos Tavares, chairman of the managing board of Group PSA, will speak to you as well. Both are looking forward to taking questions after the presentation. You can raise your questions here in the room, but of course also via the web tool and on the phone. After the press conference, we will offer pool TV and radio statements with Mr. Tavares and Mr. Loscheller in the room next door here behind me. And now I would like to hand over to the CEO of Opel Vauxhall, Michael Loscheller. Michael. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot for following our invitation and joining us here today in Rüsselsheim and wherever you are online across the world. We took the commitment to present our future plan within 100 days after becoming part of the group PSA, and I'm delighted to unveil it exactly 100 days after the closing. We are driving at full speed with new mindset that will give Opel Vauxhall a sustainable future. I would first of all like to thank my Opel and Vauxhall colleagues who have been working very hard to build this plan in record time. I am very proud of our committed team. I would also like to thank our colleagues from Paris who have always been in support since the closing date. Very importantly, and I want to address this at the very beginning, our objective is to achieve our goals without plant closures and without forced redundancy in Europe thanks to strong improvement of competitiveness. PACE will unleash Opel's Vauxhall full potential and turn Opel Vauxhall into a sustainable, profitable company. PACE is not just a word. Each letter embodies our new state of mind, as you can see on the screen. It expresses our new competitive mindset and willingness to focus on the execution of this plan. Simply, because the situation at Opel Vauxhall is very difficult after many years of losses. There is no doubt the status quo is not an option. Why not? First, because the company did not manage to return to profitability since 1999. And secondly, we see dramatic shifts for the entire automotive industry. Among the headwinds are the new regulations and targets regarding CO2 that will play a major role going forward. Let me be very clear. When we started working on this plan in early August, we quickly came to the conclusion that Opel was not ready to reach the CO2 targets set by the EU for 2020 and 2021. The potential consequences for the future of the company would have been dramatic. The good news is that the plan that I'm presenting here today allows us to meet the CO2 targets, which is an absolute key pillar for sustainable success and return to profitability. What we have ahead of us is not an easy task. Opel Vauxhall needs to change and we will change. Our mindset will be focused on performance and profitability. This is the best protection for our people and the future as well against any headwinds. We will build this new Opel with a level of agility that will allow us to move fast and manage all the upcoming challenges in the industry extremely efficient. I can say firsthand that our talented people are the perfect foundation to build our recovery on. I trust our employees and our management and I'm convinced that we will achieve this all together with the support of our partners and stakeholders. This is about collaboration and teamwork. PACE will unleash the individual and collective potential. The power is inside. And this is also reflected in the way this plan has been established. It is built on expertise of employees from various functions, levels, and countries. 
Since August 1st, our teams did the benchmarking, defined how to close any detected gaps, and framed this plan on top of their regular jobs. Please allow me to say thank you for this great performance. Seeing the teams preparing this plan has convinced me that Opel Vauxhall is ready for big changes throughout our company, from the engineer to the designer, from the marketeer to the worker in the paint shop. Nevertheless, I can't be the bearer of good news only. As a CEO, I'm transparent and realistic. Reduction of cost in all areas, including labor cost, will be part of our future plan. It is necessary and unavoidable. But we will do this in a responsible and thoughtful way. And as I mentioned earlier, with the intention to refrain from forced redundancies and without plant closures. This is a very important message and shows the commitment not only of Opel Vauxhall, but the entire group PSA. It goes without saying that we will, as it is good practice within Opel Vauxhall, consult and negotiate required actions with our employees' representative, especially the Works Council and the Union IG Metall in Germany. We have, of course, initiated the dialogue right away. Our current thinking goes along the lines of innovative working time concept, short work in selected areas, voluntary programs or early retirement schemes through responsible human resources management. Opel Vauxhall is a proud part of the group PSA now, which has created a new European champion. The market share makes us the continent's second largest car maker with first or second place in the most important markets. Global sales of the enlarged company amounts to 4.3 million units per annum, and automotive revenue sums up to 55 billion euros based on 2016 figures. The Group PSA now operates more than 40 plants, 10 R&D centers, and has over 200,000 employees. The combined purchasing power sums up to almost 39 billion. These are very impressive figures. We are sure that our employees business partners, and of course our customers, will benefit from this strength. We want to make the best use of this new potential. We have set ourselves crystal clear objectives. In the first phase, we are targeting to become profitable again and to reach an automotive recurring operating margin of 2%, as well as a positive operational free cash flow by 2020. However, we will not stop there and instead have set ourselves a much more ambitious goal for the second phase of our PACE plan in which we improve and accelerate growth. By 2026, we intend to reach an automotive recurring margin of 6%. The Group PSA has proven that it is possible to reach such ambitious targets in record time, coming from minus 2.8% operating margin in 2013 to more than 7% positive in the first half of 2017. And there is no reason why Opel Vauxhall can't achieve this too. All of us at Opel Vauxhall are truly committed to fulfilling this plan and will be proud to deliver these goals. This will require a strong focus on execution, which is 95% of the entire work. The first action that I want to point out to achieve this target is a significant reduction of our financial break-even point to 800,000 units per year before 2026. It does not at all mean that we are planning to reduce sales to 800,000 vehicles. We have growth ambitions, as you will see later on. Reducing the financial break-even point to 800,000 vehicles means that we are putting Opel Vauxhall in a position to make a profit from this level of sales. This lowering of the financial break-even point creates a shield to protect the company and its employees from the headwinds generated by the challenging environment that the automotive industry is facing these days. The focus of our PACE plan is not to grow at any cost, but to build an efficient and profitable company for successful, sustainable future. 
Our employees and our stakeholders deserve this. We have defined four key levers that will enable us to reach our goals. First, we have a clear roadmap to become a leader in CO2 emissions. One important contributor will be electrification. I can proudly say today, Opel will go electric. Second, we will enhance competitiveness by reducing cost while continuing to invest. Third, we will strengthen our powerful brands. Fourth, and we will foster profitable sales. Coming now to the first lever. We have now a clear CO2 roadmap to close the previous gap and meet the 95 gram target set by the EU for 2020. Measures to reach our goals are set. Quick shift of the existing portfolio ahead of 2020. Full utilization of Group PSA technology, making electrification across the portfolio possible. This will also be supported by more eco innovations like smart LED lighting or low resistance tires. We will have four electrified lines on the market by 2020, including the Grandland XP HEV and the next generation Corsa that will also be available as a fully electric vehicle. And even more, every new passenger car line in Europe will get an electrified option offering also a BEV or a hybrid version alongside efficient internal combustion engines. With that, Opel Vauxhall will be a leader in CO2 and a fully electrified European passenger car brand by 2024. Opel Vauxhall goes electric. Let's come to the second and how we will improve our competitiveness. Big contributors to the improved efficiency are reduced complexity and increased synergies. Combining strengths will unleash annual synergies on group PSA level of 1.1 billion euros by 2020 and 1.7 billion euros by 2026. About one third of synergies are expected in purchasing, another quarter in R&D and 20% in manufacturing. We are certain that these announced synergies will be reached and we are obviously analyzing further potential. We will in addition release working capital of 1.2 billion. The working capital result is mainly driven by changes in the business processes resulting in lower inventory levels and better payment flows. The full working capital effect will be realized by 2022. We will leave no stone unturned and in our quest to reduce cost all functions. Internal benchmarks within Group PSA help Opel Vauxhall to realize joint savings in multiple areas. Overall, we will reduce the cost per car by 700 euros by 2020. Another good example of the joint forces is that we will significantly improve fixed marketing expenses efficiency by more than 10% by 2020. General and administration costs will be reduced from a cost to net sales ratio of 5.6% to 4.7% in 2020. Contributors here are, for example, a reduction of outside supplier costs, savings in IT costs, and also a rigorous cut, cut of travel costs. One other major lever is that we will lower the ratio of wage costs to revenues to industry benchmark, like PSA did in the last few years. My executive team and I will, of course, also contribute to the savings. Efficiencies start at the top. A leaner leadership team and simplified processes will also lead to faster decisions. This is why I've reduced the number of my direct reports from 20 to 10. And the board of directors now consists of six members instead of nine. Changes have to start at the top of the company. Or as we say in German, die Treppe wird von oben gekehrt. We will reduce the complexity in engineering dramatically. We will capitalize on a common platform strategy. Complexity and path reduction will significantly increase efficiency. 100% of our passenger models of Opel Vauxhall will be based on joint group PSA architectures by 2024 at the latest, bringing scale effects. We will have reduced the number of passenger car architectures from nine to two by 2024. Powertrain families will be reduced from 10 to four in the same time frame. A 
additionally, we will lower the number of engine transmission applications by 40% by 2023. This major technical shift will be fully managed by Opel Engineering, which will be an integral part of the global group PSA R&D network. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to present to you today in detail how the future of this engineering center will look like and how we will strengthen the DNA of every Opel Vauxhall going forward. Thank you. Based on Group PSA technologies like platforms and powertrains, all new Opel Vauxhall vehicles will be engineered in Rüsselsheim, ensuring that an Opel will always be an Opel and a Vauxhall will always be a Vauxhall. We will engineer our cars with the same focus on the key differentiators that our customers love. With German precision, quality and reliability. This includes our unique design, the German chassis tuning, very precise shifting and steering, and of course our leading light technology, the healthy ergonomic seats, and the low noise and vibration level tested at high speed on German Autobahn. Overall, we will benefit from a stronger and increased joint group PSA R&D capacity. The joint R&D and CapEx spendings will amount to 7 to 8% of automotive revenue. We have now a clear vision of the strong contribution of Rüsselsheim R&D Center with the creation of core competencies from the entire group PSA. This is a clear proof point how the competencies and capabilities of our engineers are recognized. At the beginning, the engineering center will have the lead for the following areas beyond design and conception for all future Opel Vauxhall vehicles. US market federalization for vehicles and powertrains, fuel cells, alternative fuels, certain automated driving and driver assistant developments, electric and electronic test automation, and software configuration and release. Of course, our engineers will work closely with the other group PSA R&D centers across the world. With this setup, the future of Opel Engineering in Rüsselsheim is at the heart of group PSA R&D network, which will benefit to a maximum from the highly recognized competence of our engineers. Status quo is not an option in manufacturing, and our goal is to enhance competitiveness as we want to bring Opel Vauxhall plants to industry benchmarks. We target to improve efficiency of our manufacturing and logistics by more than 400 euros per car by 2020. We will use several levers like the reduction of the component diversity by 50% or right sizing the plant space and improve logistics efficiency. We target space savings of around 25%. Our goal is to increase utilization of our European plants by more than 100% by 2020. For example, by moving volumes from Korea to Europe. By 2020, we will import nearly 200,000 vehicles less per year. Another lever is that we will be able to reduce our capex from 6% of revenue in 2017 to 4% in 2020 through improvement in carryover tools. All of these measures will contribute to reduce the performance gaps as quickly as possible. This is also a prerequisite of additional workload and investment. Top performance leads to new vehicle allocations for the manufacturing site. For each plant, we are building a roadmap to make the plants competitive again and to secure their future with the allocation of Group PSA brand models as per existing cross-manufacturing principles. For strategic reasons, we can't inform in detail about future vehicle allocations, but I can unveil first parts of the global investment plan for the modernization of the following plants. We target the localization of the EMP2 platform in Eisenach for the production of an SUV in 2019 and Rüsselsheim for a D-segment vehicle. The allocation of new powertrains and Opel Vauxhall manufacturing sites will accompany the shift from GM architecture to Group PSA engines and gearboxes. Let me now guide you through the actions of our third lever. 
We will strengthen our brands and improve in pricing power and quality. Opel Vauxhall brands are clearly positioned. The Opel brand promise is Opel offers German precision, engineering, and high-tech for all. We ensure that the latest and most relevant innovations are accessible to everyone. The brands Opel, Vauxhall, Peugeot, Citroën, and DS Automobile already differentiate themselves very strongly today with a very low cannibalization risk. There is one thing that we have made clear from the beginning. Opel will remain a true German brand. It adds Germanness to the Group PSA portfolio. The Grandland X, which you see at the back of this room, is a prime example for the brand differentiation within Group PSA. The Grandland X and its cousin, the Peugeot 3008, are jointly developed within the Group PSA on the cutting edge platform EMP2. And even though the Grandland X shares a platform with the Peugeot 3008, everybody can see that these are two very different vehicles addressing two different kinds of customers. The Grandland X is a true Opel. The 3008 is a real Peugeot. This brand DNA is reflected in our new brand claim, which we introduced this summer. Die Zukunft gehört allen, the future is everyone. Let's have a closer look. We don't know what the future holds, but we know it can't be the same as the past. Everything has to change. Our world, our cities, our lives. To put an end to accidents, noise and emissions. To make mobility really accessible to all of us. To make technology for a humane way of life. For a planet we can be proud to pass on to our children. It's our aspiration that everyone can participate in this change. Why should what is important for all only be accessible to a few? We don't always want to be the first, but we always want to be the first to make the best accessible for everyone. There's no time to lose, because only these inventions that are available for all will actually make the world a better place. Opal, the future is everyone's. Same what applies to the Opel brand obviously is also true for the Vauxhall brand. Every Vauxhall will be a true Vauxhall and Vauxhall will remain a true British brand. The Opel Vauxhall design philosophy manifested in our creation is defined as German precision meets sculptural artistry. The Germanness of the Opel brand represents technology, precision, quality and a structured purity in both design expressions and execution. The sculptural aspect of our design highlights the important exciting and emotional side of Opel Vauxhall. Our design philosophy will stay consistent but be reinterpreted over time with established design cues evolving to express the boldness of our brand. On the chart behind me you get a first glimpse of what you can expect of Opel Vauxhall in the coming future. Design will remain one of our core strengths and brand differentiators going forward, showcasing innovative visionary ideas and technology that will be exciting and relevant for all our customers. Based on an even stronger brands and higher quality products, we will focus on enhancing our pricing power. We will also focus on communicating these values even stronger to our customers. A better sales mix and price positioning are key pillars to make progress in this area. Key focus is to capitalize on our young product portfolio in the fast growing SUV segment. By 2021, 40% of our sales volume will be in this booming and very profitable market segment. Next year, our three SUVs, Crossland X, Mocha X and Grandland X will be available for the first time for a full year. And let me ju name just a few further examples how we reach a higher pricing power. We will reduce drastically non-profitable sales and will be very disciplined in terms of sales channel mix. We aim to grow our market share in retail with our new product offerings and fleet and improve total cost of ownership thanks to CO2 forthcoming leadership. The introduction of the top of the line trim level ultimate will position our cars higher. 
Our overall pricing power target is a three-year improvement by four percentage points versus the benchmark. We are convinced that quality must be at the core of our DNA. Substantial improvements in quality performance have already been achieved in recent years, but will not stop in improving every day. We want to be among the best in industry with regards to quality, customer satisfaction, and loyalty. We have set ourselves clear targets. Our goal is to achieve a leading position in quality and customer satisfaction for each new product we bring to the market. In manufacturing, we are moving from a purely manufacturing-focused quality approach to a holistic enterprise approach. The direct run rate is a key performance indicator for first-time quality in manufacturing process. Our goal is to close the gap versus industry benchmark level by 2020. Furthermore, we will improve our brand loyalty through actions and incentives at dealer level to close the gap to the benchmark by more than 50% by 2020 and achieve benchmark levels by 2024. We will support increased residual value of our product by improving reliability and durability, totally in line with the brand claim that stood for Opel over decades. Opel, der Zuverlässige. Let's come to the fourth lever. We will put a stronger focus on profitable sales with new models, markets, and an LCV offensive. As you all know, 2017 was an exceptional year for Opel Vauxhall with the launch of seven new models. We will continue our product offensive, and on short term, this includes two major launches, the new Combo in 2018 and the next generation Corsa in 2019. In total, we will launch nine new vehicles until 2020, including body styles and mid-cycle enhancements. To put even more focus on profitability, we will reduce complexity and focus on key profit pools, options, and versions. Beyond our passenger car offensive, the light commercial vehicle business will be an even stronger contributor for Opel Vauxhall in the new setup, as we will benefit from synergies with the European market leader, which is Group PSA. We will develop our footprint in this financially attractive business where we are currently underrepresented. Enablers will be the strengthening of the attractiveness of the LCV business for our dealers. The launch of the new combo in 2018, which is jointly developed with Peugeot and Citroën brands. This very competitive product will lead to higher sales thanks to a strong, exciting vehicle, both in the commercial and the family mover segment. Exploration of new markets potential starting with Turkey. Start of the electrification of our LCV portfolio in 2020 to address customer needs and fulfill the city's requirements for the future. We have set ourselves ambitious targets. The total LCV volume will be increased by more than 25% between 2017 and 2020. Another driver of profitable sales will be the increase of export sales outside Europe, as there is a clear potential for a German brand. Our plan foresees to double overseas sales by 2020 and achieve more than 10% of our annual sales volume outside of Europe by mid of next decade. To reach this, we will further strengthen our brand in the 15 export markets in Asia, Africa, and South America, where we are already present today. Beyond that, we will enter more than 20 new export markets by 2022 by leveraging Group PSA sales and industrial footprint around the globe. The fact that Group PSA operates plants around the world gives us many opportunities to expand our international footprint quickly and without huge investment in greenfields. Additionally, we will explore worldwide mid-term opportunities for the launch of Opel in important global markets such as China and Brazil. Of course, each export business must make money. Opel will go global, finally. We have identified additional profit and revenue drivers. We will develop our after-sales business, which will lead to an improvement in operating profit of more than 100 million until 2020. One important aspect is finding synergies in the warehouse and logistics footprint across Europe, learning the best way to market our parts and accessory to our customers in Europe together in our new constellation will lead to further profit improvements. 
Another important cornerstone of our future plan is the strengthening of our financial services activities. The closing of Opel Bank is effective since November 1st and will lead to new possibilities for us. We will introduce full service leaving offers in a first step in Germany starting in 2018. We will be able to offer benchmark financial services via Opel Bank and Vauxhall Financing, leveraging BNP Paribas very competitive cost of funds and bank PSA expertise. Overall, we will increase the penetration of financial offers, services and insurance products. Furthermore, we will continue to professionalize our dealer network. We will enable our dealers to become more performance oriented. We will also foster the digitalization in sales. And a very good example is our Car U pilot store that we just opened in a mall in Stuttgart. You have just seen a comprehensive overview of the most decisive measures we plan to implement in the coming months and years to make Opel Vauxhall profitable and sustainable. Through PACE, we commit to deliver clear targets. In the first phase, positive operational free cash flow and 2% operating automotive recurring margin by 2020, and then 6% by 2026. Let me summarize how we want to achieve these targets. The levers for our turnaround are a clear roadmap to become a CO2 leader in a fully electrified brand by 2024. We will enhance our competitiveness and implement synergies of 1.1 billion euros per annum by 2020, respectively 1.7 billion per annum by 2026 on a group level. And we will release 1.2 billion euros working capital by 2022. We will lower our financial break-even point significantly to 800,000 units before 2026. One of the key elements is a drastic reduction of complexity. We will lower the number of platforms for passenger cars to two and reduce the number of powertrain families to four by 2024. Furthermore, we will improve efficiency and reduce complexity in our plants as increased competitiveness is a precondition to secure the future of our plants. We intend to achieve all our goals without plant closures and without forced redundancy. While we aim to become significantly more efficient, we also invest into our production sites. New products will be allocated to our plants starting with Rüsselsheim and Eisenach. Our engineering center in Rüsselsheim will be a key contributor to Group PSA Global R&D. All new Opel Vauxhall vehicles will be engineered here in Rüsselsheim. First Opel Vauxhall competence centers for Group PSA are already identified. We will continue to strengthen our brands and increase our pricing power. We are targeting an improvement by four percentage points versus benchmark by 2020. Last but not least, we will foster profitable sales. In total, we will launch nine new vehicles until 2020, including body styles and mid-cycle enhancements. We will increase our LCV sales by more than 25% until 2020. We will enlarge our frontiers and increase oversell sales to more than 10% of sales by mid-2020s. Additionally, we will capitalize on new possibilities thanks to the strengthening of our financial service activities. Today is the first day of execution of PACE and we are all committed to deliver. I trust my team and all Vauxhall employees and know that I can rely on the support of the entire group PSA. All together with our stakeholders and partners, we tackle every key area of our business. Opel Vauxhall will go profitable, electric and global. Thank you. And now I would like to hand over to Carlos Tavares for further remarks. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for this uh, clear presentation and uh, good morning to you all, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here with you and uh, indeed share a few thoughts and put in perspective uh, this plan announcement within the PSA group. It is important to highlight the fact that 
100 days exactly after the closing of the Opel Vauxhall deal. Indeed, Opel management is here in front of you presenting the plan. This is a clear sign of rigor, a clear sign of prof professionalism, and indeed we need it. We need rigor, we need professionalism, we need discipline to implement this very strong plan. I would like also to express my sincere appreciation to all the team members that worked on this plan. I was a witness of this very hard work because 100 days is not a lot of time to do what has been done uh, in terms of building the future of the company. And I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all the executives, all the team members, and to Michael Loeschler for the work that has been done over this last 100 days to build this plan. This plan is not a gimmick plan. This plan is not a demagogic plan. This plan is robust. This plan is honest. And this plan has been built by the Opel employees for the Opel employees. It is very important that we all understand this. And I would like also to highlight that the leadership of the management team will be key for the success of this plan implementation. Of course, Michael mentioned that, and we all know it from experience, that a plan is a plan. And a plan is 5% of the work that we have to do. What we have ahead of us is 95% of implementation. And it is important that we all keep this in mind. At this, pay, at this point, we have done 5%. We have 95% of execution and implementation ahead of us. So if we look back at what has happened to this company over the last 15 years, I think it is a matter of fact that not only we did not prepare for the future, as Michael mentioned, with the CO2 situation that was faced by the team over this last uh, month, not only we were not on track to meet the European uh, CO2 uh, requirements, but on top of that, we have to recognize in an honest and peaceful way that over the last 15 or more years, this company has lost more than $10 billion of accumulated losses. This company has cut more than 30,000 jobs, and this company has lost more than three points of market share in the European market. This is a fact. And this is where we start from. It is something that, of course, is a, a dramatic situation. I think we should not have any uh, restraint on this matter. We are facing a dramatic situation. And uh, taking into consideration the headwinds that are now visible in Europe, uh, we can say that this dramatic situation is getting worse and worse day by day. This then means that we have here a significant opportunity to rescue this company and make sure that we bring a solution to our Opel employees. And in fact, we are here working to bring a solution to the Opel employees. I think it is fair to say that over the last 15 years, looking at these results, we have not given them an appropriate answer as we were not able so far to turn around the company. So if I'm standing here in front of you this morning with Michael, it's because we are committed to bring a solution to the Opel employees for a very simple reason, is because they are expecting us to do so. The Opel employees are expecting us finally to create a sustainable future for this company. And that means that we need to ask management to manage. We need to ask management to manage without fear, with a sense of responsibility on the fact that we are doing the right things to make sure that we bring an answer and a positive answer to our employees. I would like to share with them a very simple statement. The unpopular leaders of today will be the heroes of tomorrow. Managing a car company, taking all the appropriate decisions to make it sustainable, company because it delivers recurrent profits is not, of course, an easy task, but is a rewarding task. It is something that puts you 
in a position where you, when you get the results, you can look at your people and say, well, guys, all the decisions we have made were not easy. Some of them, you didn't like them, but at the end of the day, it works. And now we can hand over to the next generation of leaders, a company that is healthier, with better results, and a capability to invest in its own future. So I would like here to highlight the fact that we need to create the conditions for management to manage. So going back to what happened to uh, the PSA group over the last four years, I just would like to remind you that uh, in uh, April 2014, we presented the turnaround back in the race plan. It was a plan focused on operational e excellence. As you know, they deliver some good results and we are now implementing since April 2016, our profitable growth plan that we call Push to Pass. And uh, turning around the PSA group was not an easy task. I must say we were not always popular in all the decisions that we had to make to uh, turn around this company, but it was possible thanks to a clear convergence between our employees, our union partners, and all the other stakeholders that were facing this dramatic situation. And we were all eager, employees, management, unions, suppliers, stakeholders. We are all eager to demonstrate that it was possible, even though many observers, and eventually some in this room, thought it was not possible. So I'm, I'm happy to present to you some of the results that were achieved as a testimony on the things that can be done in this automotive industry, which we know is highly competitive and sometimes brutal. So the PSA group started in 2013 with a minus 2.8% operating profit margin for the automotive business, minus 2.8. And on the first half of 2017, we delivered a very robust 7.3%. So we moved from minus 2.8 to plus 7.3. While we were doing this turnaround, the, the volumes of the company continued to grow. The growth was small, as you can see through the numbers, but there was some growth during the turnaround, which means a turnaround does not always mean volume reduction, and the case of a PSA is just demonstrating that. And over this turnaround period, we were able to accumulate a total positive free cash flow of nearly 10 billion euros over those, over those years which clearly demonstrates that when there is the willingness, the vision, the execution capability, and the convergence of sense of responsibility from all the stakeholders, this kind of turnaround is still possible in the automotive world and in Europe currently. This is something that gives us a lot of confidence, a lot of visibility on the possibility to finally bring a solution to the Opel employees. Over this period, not only we were able to accumulate 10 billion euros of positive free cash flow, but we were able to reduce by 1.2 billion euros our total fixed cost without plant closures and without forced redundancies. We were also able to bring down the break-even point of the company by 1 million cars, which is very important because uh, it means that currently the PSA group even before the acquisition of Opel Vauxhall, we had a break-even point of around 1.6 million invoices for a company that is selling 3 million cars, which is a very healthy position. And of course, I don't want to forget here the importance of the pricing power, which is the capability to sell to the customer the value of what is created in the company. And of course, this is paramount to uh, the profitability of the company. So this journey was based on three levers. Why could this happen? Well, it happened first because the leadership was able to unleash the potential of the people of the company. And I want to testify in front of you that uh, over this last 100 days, I have met great people by Opel Vauxhall. Great people. And this is something I want to tell you, not. Uh, as a dem demagogic comment, but just because it is the truth. We have great people at Opel, 
And we have great people that uh, are eager to unleash their own potential. And I would like to tell you very simply, for Opel Vauxhall, people are not the problem. People are the solution. This turnaround plan will be a success based on the quality of our people, based on the leadership of our managing board to unleash the potential of these people. And this is exactly what happened by PSA. Second lever, make sure that the management is fully empowered to pull the performance. The management does not fear to be highly demanding. Management does not fear to be unpopular. Management needs to manage. Management needs to do the right things because at the end of the journey, there is a healthier company. There is a profitable company. There is a proud company, proud of its own turnaround. And the third lever is the understanding that uh, we give the people the possibility to have their destiny in their hands. We have no intention, and I have no intention, to micro micromanage Opel Vauxhall. Opel Vauxhall is in the hands of Opel CEO and Opel Managing Board. The only thing we want is to make sure that this company becomes a healthy company at the end of the day, and of course, it will benefit to the PSA group, but we want this company to become a healthy company on its own merit, based on its own vision, based on its own strength and energy. This is important, and this is, of course, a third and very important lever is to make people understand that they have their destiny in their hands. So overall, what is the most important is to understand that the only thing that protects in our world, a very fast changing world, the only thing that protects is performance. Everything that is not related to performance is demagogy. So if we want sincerely to protect our people and to protect Opel Vauxhall, we need to look for performance and we need to deliver performance. Performance, of course, with our partners, our suppliers, performance with our dealers who have to take care of our customer satisfaction, and of course, looking for performance with our union partners. It is very important that we understand that uh, we are eager. We are eager to work with our union partners. We are eager to make this a success with them, and we are eager to listen to them and to listen to their ideas. But at the same time, nobody can consider that we don't have a huge sense of urgency. The situation is quite dramatic. There is no time to be wasted. We need to move on. And this is exactly what Michael presented to you. This plan is on for implementation, which does not mean that we will not continue to discuss with our union partners to get their best ideas and make sure that they feel comfortable with everything we have done. At the same time, we all need to be humble and we need to recognize that what has been done in the last 15 years did not work. It's a matter of fact. And being humble means we need to have the sense of urgency all together and bring this company along in the implementation of this plan. Uh, and so please do not forget, only performance protects and demagogy is a poison. From here, uh, I would like to tell you that the situation that we have faced uh, through the PSA turnaround was fully supported by five of our unions representing more than 80% of our people. And it has been an extremely rewarding journey because the quality, the maturity of the support, the recommendations, the advice, from time to time the tensions, has been very helpful to support this journey for a higher level of performance uh, in, our, in our company. And I can tell you, you can read this in the media uh, currently in France, one of the problems that the PSA group is now facing in France is when we want to add more shifts in our plants to make more cars, we have some difficulties to find the people. This is the situation because our volumes are growing significantly, because our products are a great success, and because we have currently, and this is the number in October, the uh, capacity utilization rate of the PSA plants is 130%. 
which means that all the work that was done over those four years in terms of quality, in terms of pricing power, in terms of competitiveness of the core models, in terms of overall efficiency, all of this work is now showing results. And as you can see in the numbers, the market share of the PSA products is now increasing. So to finish with, I would like just to tell you that I would like to share with you an invitation, an invitation to elevate the vision that we have for this enlarged PSA group. We would like to build a European champion. We would like to make sure that everybody understands that being a strong champion in Europe with the 3 million car sales in Europe gives us a very strong basis from which we can leverage more profitable growth overseas. And you see that when we compare this 3 million sales in Europe for the enlarged PSA group to the other bigger groups uh, in the world, you see that you cannot be a strong global leader if you are not strong in your home market. And our home our market is, is Europe. So we are very uh, confident that having this strong European base at 3 million car sales in Europe is, of course, the foundation from which we can leverage better and more profitable growth in the world, and you can compare with the, other, with the other groups. So this is important that we also understand that we try to elevate ourselves above the nationalisms. We try to build a European champion because we believe that Europe needs to compete with the rest of the world, being the Asian brands, the American brands. And we need, in Europe, to have a European group that will be strong enough in its own market to be able to invest the cutting edge technologies to be able then to go and conquer, conquest more markets overseas. And this is exactly our strategy. So uh, this is something I wanted to share with you. And finally, uh, just three simple comments. By PSA, with this enlarged company, we considered that performance matters more than size. Why? Because when we deliver a high level of performance, the growth comes as a reward of a well done job. So we don't focus on volumes. We don't focus on market share growth. We try to make our customers happy with great service, great products. And if we make them happy, growth will come as the reward of a well done job. And this is our understanding of what we should do. We also understand that if we do a reasonable job, more opportunities will cross our road as the opportunity that the PSA group had to uh, acquire Opel Vauxhall. And this is something that we remain open to. We remain open to opportunities. But at this stage, what it is important for us all to understand is that we are here at the starting point, a rolling starting point of the implementation of the Opel turnaround plan. I would like to tell you in a very friendly manner, but very uh, responsible manner, that Opel is facing a dramatic situation. There is no time to waste. We have a great, robust and honest plan. This is not a gimmick plan. We have a great managing team. We need to support the management team to implement the plan at the fastest possible pace with the support of our union partners. And I can tell you that yesterday at the supervisory board, this plan was fully supported by the supervisory board. And I trust that they have the maturity and the sense of responsibility to continue to support. And of course, we will discuss all the topics that need to be discussed. And we have absolutely no problem with that. And we will be eager to do. But we need to understand that the Opel employees are waiting for an answer. And the answer is pace. Thank you for your attention. So uh, thank you, Mr. Tavares. And thank you, uh, Michael Loescheller. Now is the time to take your questions. Uh, as I mentioned before, 
You can ask, uh, ask the questions here in the room, uh, but I have also questions on the phone and via the live stream. And I'm going to try to be fair between analysts and journalists and French people and German people and anybody else who has been called in. Um, what I would like uh, for the people in the room here is to state your name and company or publication. And uh, for the people here, please wait uh, for the microphone before you start asking your question. So over there in the middle, just wait for the microphone. Max Hegler, Süddeutsche Zeitung aus München. Um, Mr. Tavares, uh, Mr. Luschella, um, thanks for being here. Uh, two or three questions. Um, uh, you yeah, said. Can I, sorry, can I ask you to concentrate on one because otherwise. Uh, okay. So, so ask your question. Um, then the hard question. Some people are saying, um, some people with the expertise on the Opel uh, um, technology and uh, management are saying uh, your words are arrogant <laughs> and the plan should, could be arrogant. What's your answer? Well, thank you for your question because indeed uh, those are the questions that need to be asked. Uh, I think it doesn't matter. What matters is what kind of solution we are bringing to the Opel employees. And indeed, um, this perception that you may have, which is of course not my intention, uh, may come from the fact that we are passionate. We are passionate about uh, fixing this significant problem. And I am very sorry uh, to see how much pain has been created in this company for so many years with the results that we, we have shared with you. And, and then if uh, bringing a solution to our people in a highly passionate way with a, a lot of determination is perceived as you said, well, if this is the price to pay to protect the Opel employees, so be it. Okay, uh, I have a question here from Peter Campbell from Financial Times. Uh, Michael, how many workers do you expect to lose through non-compulsory means during the plan? And you mentioned 20 export markets for Opel. Do you know which, uh, which countries you're gonna, uh, you're gonna sell? Yeah, sure. So, so maybe starting with the export question. So we have identified those those 20 markets. I don't want to mention all of them because then you have a lot to write. But I mean, those markets include um, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, also Taiwan. So there are many, many opportunities and we will explore them one by one and obviously have opportunities there and have to make money um, immediately with these export markets because um, that's why we enter those. Yeah. So, so give you some some color and some some flavor. In terms of the jobs, let me um, reiterate what I clearly stated um, also this morning when we had a meeting um, with all our employees and, and the Works Council and IG Metall that we do not plan any plant closures and do not plan any forced redundancies. However, we see that our personal costs in relation to, to revenues are high and we will have to work on that and we do that. And that includes many of the activities I have also mentioned that will include early retirement offers, that includes overtime. We look at um, people who work 40 hours a week, um, which is contractually agreed. We will reduce that in many, many cases to 35. And all these things we look at. So I'm focusing on personnel cost in relation to revenue. Um, and that is what matters and that's where we have a gap. Okay, uh, in the middle of the room. Yeah. Hi, um, Michael Rapp, Kepler Chevrolet. Right over here. Hey. Um, when it comes to lowering the break even point to 800,000 units per year, could you please give us a feeling for how many units the break even point is at right now to have a benchmark, since you mentioned the word benchmark so often? Thanks. It's too high. And that means exactly what a number is? It's, it's very high, and that's why it is so important to reduce it as quickly as we can to, to the 800,000 level. Okay, if I said oh, 2 million, would that be sorry. too low? That's it. Okay. Next question comes from Stefan Burgstaller from Goldman Sachs. It's a question for Mr. Tavares. 
In the initial turnaround of PSA, you were very focused or maybe even obsessed about free cash flow generation. This was apparent in the management incentives objectives. Today, you did not talk much about how the management incentives are aligned with the plan. Or you as focused on cash generation at Opel. So I would leave it with that. Well, it's a great point, and thank you for asking the question. Uh, indeed, uh, there is, as you know well, a significant cash burn ongoing, and uh, I can tell you that the management team uh, led by Michael is completely focused in the saving cash. I think that everybody knows that cash is king, and this is the number one, the number one priority. At the same time, we also need to recognize, and this is something that uh, is completely clear in the plan that was presented by Michael, that we are going through a very uh, significant uh, changing period in terms of electrification uh, for a, a car company, and this also needs to be also taken into consideration. Uh, but of course, everything that is done uh, currently is aligned with the, the fact that we want a positive free cash flow by 2020 at the latest, and we want the 2% EBIT at 2020 at the latest. So everything that is now being implemented through this plan is aligned with this goal, uh, which is clear that it embarks significant cash saving actions and significant focus on this. Of course, uh, related to the bonus of the management, uh, you can be sure that it will be completely aligned on the different uh, milestones that lead the company to uh, the objectives that were presented by, by Michael, as it is good practice uh, in a healthy uh, management company. Okay, we have a question from the phone from Mr. Jose Asimundi from GPM. Mr. Asimundi, go ahead. Thank you, Jose JP Morgan. Uh, just one question, please. Um, can you talk a, bit, a, a little bit about making Russell's have a center of global competence and what this means for the remaining R&D centers, and is there not an overlap here uh, across the R&D centers? And also, if you could please comment on your current labor cost to sales ratio. What is the ratio and what is the benchmark level, please? Thank you. Well, thank you for, for your two questions. I will take the, the first one on the R&D and let Michael answer uh, on the other one on the labor cost. On the R&D, you know, we, we are uh, somewhere very lucky. We are somewhere very lucky because, uh, you know, we have, since the acquisition, uh, significant uh, engineering power. Significant engineering power. We have very strong engineering in, in Germany, in Ososheim, from one side, very strong engineering power in France from the other side. And the precise, at the precise moment where uh, we have this uh, uh, significant increase in engineering power, we are faced with a, a very difficult challenge, which is to put back uh, Opel Vauxhall on track in terms of CO2 roadmap. And as you may imagine, and I want here to pay a tribute to the Opel teams and the PSA teams that have worked together over the last 100, year, 100 days, is the fact that they were able to rebuild in a few weeks completely the product planning strategy of the company, the technology plan of the company, in order to put Opel back on track to meet the European uh, uh, regulations by 2020. This is an outstanding achievement. And this not only demonstrates the quality of our people, it also demonstrates the quality and the, the very spontaneous collaboration between uh, the French engineering teams and the German engineering team. So now we are sitting here with the problem which is to turn around Opel, but at the same time, we have this strong engineering power that we can leverage to change the course of the events in terms of CO2. And we are using this very high engineering power to put back the company on track in terms of CO2. And of course, some of you will ask me the question about what do we think about the CO2 requirements for 2025 and 2030 later on. And this is for the enlarged PSA group, a significant asset that we are going to leverage to protect our companies and our people. This being said, it is also clear that you have seen through Michael's presentation that 
some very significant and very important centers of competence are going to be put in Rosersheim because we know that we have great engineers. So we intend to use this engineering power on what they are able to do best. And you saw federalization, you saw ADAS development, you <laughs> saw fuel cells, you saw new energies. All of this is going to be sitting in Rosersheim and we are going to combine the R&D power of these two great uh, scientifically educated nations called France and Germany. And we are going to make sure that as a European champion, we are going to leverage this as the technology power of our European car company facing the competition. So at the end of the day, uh, this, is, this is a huge, huge opportunity for, for our company. Michael? Yeah, in terms of, of the, the first question, I think I was very clear in my presentation that we have significant um, gaps there to, to the benchmark. And I think on the euro per car, I was also very clear we need a 700 euro improvement on a per car basis. So currently, we, we have some, some gaps there and we'll close that by 2020. I also want to, to point out one thing which maybe is, is not fully appreciated in the overall context. We have many, many opportunities now changing also the business setup. And the import of cars from Korea is a very important one for me because it's not a good business bringing cars from Korea which take months on the boat, tie up working capital, very difficult to forecast in terms of currency fluctuation and in terms of profitability also very, very um, difficult. So these reductions of import volumes I talked about are very, very important for us and obviously helps us also to strengthen employment in, in Europe. Yeah, so those are big, big opportunities we now can take and we do that and they overall strengthen us in terms from a financial aspect, also working capital aspect, but also an employment one. But very clearly to, to wrap this up, we, we are behind benchmark and that's why we are very clear in terms of the targets an improvement of 700 euros per car by 2020. Okay, Annette, I need you here, the microphone in the middle. Holger Appel, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Mr. Tavares, um, one of your key factors for acquiring Opel was that there are people, they don't want to buy a French car and you wanted to have a German car company in your company. Um, how, do we, how will you make sure that um, the customers still think they are buying a German car when it's all French inside? Well, you know, in our world, as you know well, uh, there is no certainty, there is no 100% certainty, of course. But you see, um, through my automotive life, uh, which starts now to be quite long, uh, I have learned something which is quite simple, is that uh, we need to trust our people. Uh, when we say that we are going to engineer the Opel cars uh, in Germany, and when we uh, tell our designers that they can totally unleash their creative power as a, as a, a German team, I know that by just giving them breathing space and telling them, look, you are a German team, please express your best talent as a German team, uh, I know that they will express the German dimension of the Opel cars at the end of the day, just because they, they understand the culture, they understand the country, they understand the customer expectations, they understand the value of technology and the value of a well-done car. So at my level, I don't have to go much further than this. I just have to say, you are a German team, please express what German automotive technology and German automotive mobility is. Feel free, go ahead, use the breathing space. You know, one of the things that may surprise you is we are moving from a world where the center of decision was Detroit to a world where the center of decision is not Paris, it's Rosersheim. That may come as a surprise, but this is what it is. The only thing that we are interested in is that Opel is healthy and profitable. That's it. So our German teams in design, in engineering, in manufacturing, they are free to express their capabilities, and I know that they are very high because I have met them. The only small thing I have learned in my career is try to appreciate human beings and how passionate and competent they can be in some specific position. So we tell our German teams, go ahead, do your best, express your potential, express your creative power. And as a natural consequence, we will have more Germanist 
in our, in our Opal products. So if you ask me, am I sure? No, I'm not sure. But am I convinced that this is what is going to happen? Yes, I'm convinced. OK, the lady in the back. Can you please identify yourself? Ach so, Heidje Beutel vom MDR in Thüringen. Können Sie bitte etwas mehr zu dem Standort Eisenach erzählen, wer, zu dem Modell, das da geplant ist, welche Stückzahlen geplant sind und ob das Zwei- oder Dreischichtbetrieb bedeuten wird? Das sind schon viel zu viele Fragen jetzt. Hallo, Schell. Die Frage war auf Eisenach und das Modell, die SUV. So, sorry, let me, let me um, re-emphasize this point, because I, I think it, it also shows that we take actions and change things. So to launch um, a car in 2019 in Eisenach without electrification is not responsible management. I cannot come to Eisenach and stand in front of the employees and say, great, here's a car and that runs for six, seven years and has no electrification. I'm not doing that. And I think that's not responsible management. And I think we took now the right decision and bring a new modern architecture from PSA with electrification to Eisenach and build an SUV on it in 2019, which is exactly, exactly the same time frame we had foreseen for the prior model. So I think this shows how we tackle things in a very short period of time. The, the automotive experts in the room know what that means if you change it um, at this moment in time. And I think it shows that we take the future very serious, uh, go for the electrified version, and I think it's excellent news for Eisenach. OK. Uh, last question um, from Gaëtan Toulmonde, Deutsche Bank. Can we have an idea of 2017 mag magnitude of revenues as opera uh, an operating loss? Well, I don't think we can uh, say this today. Uh, I, I share with you that uh, there is a, a great sense of urgency. Uh, I'm not trying here to create uh, any kind of uh, fake uh, situation. It is uh, really uh, a dramatic situation. We need to be very, very uh, conscious of the situation. The management is now uh, on board. Uh, we had yesterday a, a very strong review on, on this matter, and uh, we just need to share the fact that we need to move. Michael was very clear. Michael uh, highlighted the fact that uh, uh, statu quo is not an option. He's absolutely right. Uh, it is also clear that we are moving in a fast changing world. The world is moving very fast around us. Many new things are popping up every day. And we need to stick together inside Opel Vauxhall, but also inside of the enlarged PSA group, because together we are stronger. We see the benefit of this uh, stronger group by bringing just in time the appropriate technology to avoid any uh, severe penalties by 2020. And this is, of course, of paramount importance. And now we need to stick together be very focused on the implementation of this PACE plan and make sure that through the rigor, the professionalism and the discipline of this plan implementation, we rebound. I have tried to show you that rebound is possible. Rebound is challenging. And of course, uh, our uh, competitors are outside of the group. They are not inside of the group. So time has come for a great deal of solidarity, a great deal of focus, and a great deal of discipline in the implementation of this plan. I trust that uh, Michael and his leadership team have the capability to do this job, and this is the reason why we support them 100%. But it is also important that I ask you all to give us a hand. I would like also that you be part of this turnaround process, because I think it's good for our employees that we also support them by creating around Opal uh, an atmosphere of some serenity that gives them the capability to focus on their own job, to do the right things for the company. So I would like also to ask you to support Opal, to support Vauxhall, and make sure that you give them a chance to turn around their own company, because it is important for them that this company finds its own way 
to a sustainable future. And I would like, in advance, to thank you for your support, as I did uh, to our media uh, stakeholders when we were in the process of turning around uh, PSA. And uh, I must say, we were fully supported with a very objective and very uh, friendly uh, support from, from our friends. So just like to extend this request to you, because this, what is at stake is very important, not only for Opel, but also for, for Vauxhall, for the PSA group and for Germany. Thank you for your support. Okay, let me just give you a couple of uh, housekeeping items now. We are now at the end of the press conference. Um, if there are any open questions, and I'm sure there are, um, you can uh, talk, of course, to the investor relations team or the media relations team. Uh, we have uh, all the materials that uh, are available on our website. Uh, so everything what's related to today's announcement you will find there. And we are also uploading pictures uh, from the press conference uh, as we speak here. Uh, those who want to stay a little bit longer can do. Uh, we have Wi-Fi everywhere around so you can work from here. And for those who are hungry, we have a soup for you. Um, for the television and, and radio, uh, we have a, a room next uh, door where we're going to have uh, the possibility to take some shots there. Thanks again and have a good day.